Hello everyone. So in a comment on a previous video, someone had asked about the um, elements within a Celtic context, um, Celtic language speaking culture that is, because um, I had mentioned in relation to fairies the idea of classical elements and elementals not really applying very well. So I want to address that now in this um, separate video and sort of just uh, not fairy related content, but take on um, discussing the idea of what the classical elements are and then what we find within specifically Gaulish and Irish um, cultures that could potentially be a better model for um, sort of an elemental structure or system uh, within a pagan specifically context. So to begin with, when we're talking about what the classical elements are, we are really talking about a Greek system that goes back thousands of years. And it began with Greek philosophers who were seeking a way to really better understand and describe the natural world and the universe in a more general sense. And the first one to specifically use the concept of elements and the four elements as we're familiar with them in sort of Western esotericism and paganism was Plato. And Plato had developed this sort of philosophical, philosophical system, sorry about that, um, based on the idea that there were four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. And that each of these elements was a building block of expressed reality that everything around us, um, everything in the known universe was comprised of either one of these four elements or a combination of these four elements. So that is sort of the, the foundation of the concept of elements in classical Greek material. Um, the next person who sort of adapted that to what we're a little more familiar with in uh, specifically Western paganism is Aristotle. And Aristotle added a fifth element, aether. Um, aether to him represented um, sort of the transcendent uh, spirit, if you will. Um, something that was not necessarily as physical in nature as earth, air, fire, or water. Um, even considering air to be physical because we can sense it and are aware of its presence and we can feel it if we have like the wind blowing, for example. Um, aether was sort of something that was transcendent beyond that, specifically was used to describe uh, the stars and things that existed beyond really the human tangible ability to perceive them. So um, Aristotle then gives us the five element system of earth, air, fire, water, and aether, what, what we would now call spirit. Now, more time goes by. Of course, all of this is very much debated um, within the Greek philosophers, schools of philosophy of the time. And there's different theories, there's different applications of it. But um, Hippocrates comes along and Hippocrates specifically begins to apply this concept of elements to the human body. Um, he assigns colors to them. He assigns particular qualities to them that then connect to the human physical body. This will be important in a minute when we talk about the Irish system such as we have it. So this is sort of the quick cliff notes rundown of the, the Greek system. The reason it's important to understand this and to understand where this comes from is that the idea of these four and or five classical elements really heavily permeates uh, modern paganism, modern esotericism, um, and sort of just the, the entire modern concept around magical theory, if you will. There's many reasons for this, uh, which would probably be an entire separate video to get into. Um, some of it is that a lot of modern Western occultism 
really is very heavily drawn from ceremonial magic, which itself relies a lot on uh, specific Greek material, among some other sources from the ancient world. The other aspect of this, I think, that comes into play is that for hundreds and hundreds of years, probably the last thousand years at least, Eastern European, Western European, Northern European cultures have really tried to establish their own cultural credibility, um, their own significance, their own power, by tying themselves back to the classical world, specifically to Rome and to Greece. Um, although that general area all tends to, to fall under the umbrella of this. This is something we see, for example, in um, Snorri Storlson's Eddas, the Prose Edda and the Poetic Edda, where um, both sort of emphasize the idea that the Aesir, the Norse gods, came from Troy and connect them to the Odyssey and the Iliad and those epics. Um, we also see this in Irish material. Um, we sort of see this everywhere across literature, um, particularly during certain time periods, but even into today, I think sometimes we'll see this. The idea was that the classical world is kind of held up as this epitome of ancient enlightenment and knowledge and wisdom, etc. Uh, and so to connect and tie your own culture to that, uh, theoretically, immediately gives you extra prestige and extra credibility. I have various opinions on that whole concept, but it is something we see uh, quite broadly. Um, and it has impacted culture, um, various cultures, and it has impacted Western magical practices and thought. This is only one example of that, um, but specifically the idea of the elemental system as we have it. Um, I mentioned the other video about uh, fairies versus, versus nature spirits and all of that. The um, fact that where we really get the concept of fairies as elementals from is from alchemy and um, Paracelsus specifically. And he was drawing on these Greek systems. Um, this idea that the entire manifest world was made up of these four elements. So he took that then, um, blended with his own, you know, personal theories and what was popular at his time, and made that leap to if there are these four sort of building block elements of the world, then there must be spirits and powers who control each one of those elements. It's a natural extension of the, the thought process he was in at the time. So it's very important to understand um, where the classical elements come from and how deeply embedded they are across magical and occult thinking, whether or not they should be. Again, I have opinions. I'm trying to keep most of my opinions out of this. So the question was asked then, if the idea of four or five elements specifically earth, air, fire, water, and spirit, are not native to Celtic language-speaking cultures, what does that leave us with? Now, this is where it gets tricky because we really don't have a lot in the way of written records for what the people in these cultures believed, specifically relating to things like this before Christianization. And once Christianity comes in and material is starting to be recorded um, by the monks, um, by religious scholars, it does affect what they record. So we certainly can look to um, hints and things that we do find in different material and we can make guesses, but ultimately the truth is we do not know. Um, not enough survived intact in big enough pieces for us to make any definitive claims about what the Irish or the Welsh or Cornish or Manx or Gaulish or any of the, um, the Celtic cultures of those time periods definitely believed about an elemental system. 
Um, we do find elemental systems sort of broadly across the world um, in various cultures, so it is certainly possible that the Celtic language speaking cultures had them. We do not know for sure. What you will find very commonly in modern um, Celtic focused paganism is the idea and an emphasis on sea, earth, and sky, or um, land, sea, and sky. They're put in different orders at different times. Um, and that is sort of given now as the default. This is what they believed when it came to elements, that there were three, that there was the earth, that there was water, and that there was air, earth, sea, and sky. We don't actually know that for sure. Um, it is a very widespread belief today. There's nothing wrong with believing it. If that works for you, if that connects with you, that's perfectly fine. Where the idea actually comes from is, um, I believe it was a Roman writer who was recording about the Gauls. Uh, and this would have been about 2,000 years ago. And this particular Roman writer made a comment about Gaulish mercenaries that they would swear by the sea, earth, and sky. The oath specifically being that if they betrayed their sworn word, that the sea should rise up and drown them, that the earth should open up and swallow them, and that the sky should fall and crush them as punishment for their oath being broken. It's not exactly an elemental system when we look at the source material itself. Um, it's a little more animistic in nature, I have to be honest. Um, it seems more that they were calling on those as powers, as elemental powers, and not as elements in the same sense as the classical four or five. However, um, from that has come the more modern Celtic pagan idea of three, these three elements, um, which you will find very widespread. Now, I mentioned the Irish earlier. We do have one hint in Irish material of what could potentially be an elemental system. Some people do use this, specifically in Celtic Reconstruction. And um, I had mentioned earlier when I talked about Hippocrates connecting elements to the human body that that would be significant now. And this is why. Because the one piece of evidence we have comes from a text called the seven part Adam. And it is specifically talking, of course, about Adam as in the first person in the Bible. Um, but it connects seven different elements or seven different natural features to Adam and two specific parts of the human being. Um, so these are um, earth, sea, sun, clouds, wind, stones, and the Holy Spirit. Clearly written by Christians, um, which I'm not making a criticism, just making a note. Um, Holy Spirit in this case, uh, specifically not um, Jesus or God. Uh, Holy Spirit seems to be more of an implication of some sort of animating um, soul force if you will, that being my non-Christian interpretation of this text. Um, you can interpret it however you like. So each of these is related to a specific aspect of the human body. Uh, earth is related to the, the physical body. The sea is related to the blood within the body. The face or the countenance is compared to the sun or connected to the sun. Uh, thought or the, the mental capacity of a person is connected to clouds. Um, wind is connected to breath. Bones are connected to stone. And then the soul or the animating force within the person is connected to the Holy Spirit or God, if you will. So this is the evidence we find in the Irish material. And based on this, you would use a seven elemental system uh, consisting of earth, sea, sun, clouds, wind, stones, and spirit, soul, animus, whatever you want to um, use for that seventh one. Um, clearly the Holy Spirit is not going to necessarily be appropriate or work in a pagan context for everyone. Um, but this is the Irish evidence that we have. It 
is a little reminiscent of the Greek, specifically the Hippocratic material, um, but it does expand the four and it does not look um, at them the same way. There's no fire, for example. We have the sun, but that's a bit of a different concept. Um, to me, it's a little bit of a blending between the more philosophical elemental system we find in the classical world and the more animist approach that is pretty common in a lot of the Celtic language speaking material. Sort of a blend of seeing these elements, these um, features of the world as inspirited or empowered. Um, as opposed to just being static objects. Uh, you can also argue, of course, that these seven were then seen as sort of the building blocks of all of creation. Um, everything would then consist in some way of earth, sea, sun, clouds, wind, stone, or soul. So that is what we have for the Celtic language material. Uh, I did warn you it's not much. We have the Gaulish, we have the Irish. There is some very late um, Scottish material that shows up in F. Marion McNeil's book, The Silver Bow, that talks about um, five winds, five directional winds, and sort of assigns qualities to them. I don't know that I would consider those elemental necessarily, um, but I have seen some modern Celtic pagans look at that material as sort of a source or inspiration. Um, there are also people who look at the text, um, the Irish text called The Settling of the Manor of Tara, and um, look at that as a framework uh, that's a five-part system. Uh, it's also a five-directional system. So people who tend to work with magic that involves casting circles will often rely on either the, the Scottish wind system, if you will, or the Irish from the settling of the Manor of Tara. I don't personally really equate those <coughs> with elements as we're discussing them here, but I do want to include them in the discussion so that people who are interested and want to do this research for themselves uh, can maybe look those sources up uh, and draw your own conclusions. But that is what we have. Um, that is all of what we have. That is what we know about the um, source of the four and five classical elements from Greece, and then um, what little we have in the Celtic material. For people in modern terms who are looking to incorporate elemental systems, um, there are, of course, many modern traditions that have utilized different ones. As I mentioned, the land, sea, and sky is probably the most popular that I'm aware of. Um, but there really is no hard and fast rule. There is no definitive material that you can um, look at. So you, you do have a little bit of freedom um, to research it and to adapt it and to figure out what's going to work the best for you personally. Um, I am fond of the seven part atom myself. I like the number seven. I like that it includes a diversity of um, manifest material, if you will. Um, that's not going to work for everyone, and that's perfectly fine. So that is all I can think to say on elements. I hope uh, people found this at least somewhat educational, learned a little new information. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments, and I will try to get to them when I have a chance. Have a great day, everyone.